Hey everyone, Ms. Dempsey here. This is a guide for preseason round 6 of the Manufacturer Series. Let's get this started. Pretend you're going through Sardinia A in reverse. So you start on the right side of the track, then start to turn in on the left. Brake before you reach the curb that is on the left, and by turning in a little bit, you should set yourself up to nicely take this turn and just be very patient with the throttle input. And once again, just be very patient with the throttle input as you don't want to end up on the grass. Then brake when the curb on the left ends and you just want to control your braking power. You eventually want to use a little bit more braking power just to get the car to slow down a little bit more. Then ease off the brakes to let the car rotate and be very patient with your throttle input once again. Halfway into the curb that is on the right, brake as much as you can. Take advantage of the little dip that is hanging out where the apex is as that will help your car rotate a bit more and just be very patient with the throttle once again as you want to prevent any wheel spin coming out of that turn. Move on over to the left to set yourself up for this high speed turn and when you reach the 50 meter mark that's when you want to start to brake. However, you don't want to get on the inside right away. Just be very patient with going on the inside as you want to go for a light apex so you don't end up accelerating into the grass. Brake just before the orange and blue barrier on the left ends and you want to be very patient with applying the throttle once again as if you accelerate a little too early and end up hitting just even a tiny bit of the gravel, you're going to hit that wall on the left and it's going to make your day very bad. You can start a little wide then just ease off the throttle along the way to set yourself up for the final turn then brake just before the curb on the left ends. Be very patient with easing off on the brakes and applying the throttle. Make sure you don't get three wheels or more on the blue curb as that will get you a pretty big penalty. And that's all for the lap guide. Let's go ahead and talk about the strategies. For the qualifying session, you only have five minutes, so you gotta make the most that you can. So we're going to do some fuel burning, but halfway into this first lap, we're going to start to speed things up just a little bit. Don't forget that the fuel multiplier is at time six, so it's going to be pretty easy to burn lots of fuel, which will make your car lighter, which will make your car use less effort to go faster, which will get you a better time. So halfway into the lap, we're already speeding things up a little bit. I'm burning on second gear now. And as you approach the pits up for the first time, this is where you want to think whether you want to continue fuel burning or go into the pit stop, get new tires, and then fuel burn some more. Even though the tire wear will be marginal at this point, you can decide whether you want to try to go for a new set of tires and basically start with no tire wear or just continue along your way. So we're going to fuel burn at a faster rate of speed as we're running out of time and I want to give myself enough time to do two flying laps. So it's at this point where I'm going to go for it, start my flying lap. And you want to calculate how long it'll take you to do a lap. So basically just go into a lobby with a tire and fuel settings on, do a couple laps. So that way you'll get an idea of what your lap times are looking like. So that way when you cross the line to start your first flying lap, you have more time than the time remaining itself to do your lap and when you cross the finish line you'll be able to start another lap which will be your last flying lap. So for example in this case I tend to do 121s around here with the tire and fuel settings on and I started this first flying lap when there was 1 minute and 36 seconds left. So this will give me more than enough time to be able to complete the lap especially if I make a couple mistakes and I'll still have time to do one more flying lap. So we cross the finish line there's 14 seconds left and I'm still going to be able to do another lap because once the timer hits zero another countdown will start which is basically telling you hey complete your lap as we're running out of time here. So we're just going to fast forward through this I made a couple mistakes on my first flying lap, so this is my chance to correct those mistakes, try to get a faster lap, and we're about to see what we end up getting. And we're about to get a 121.7, so not too bad. 
and you also just want to make sure that you have someone that you can get a subscription from as that will help you out on the main street. So in summary, what you can do is fuel burn your first lap, come in for new tires at the end of the first lap, fuel burn your second lap, then do your first flying lap, and if you have enough time, do another flying lap. For this race, you want to be right behind first place or right behind whoever is the leader of the pack. The reason for that is because the fuel multiplier is a times six, so you're going to be using fuel pretty quickly. You will be doing fuel saving. However, uh, you're basically going to be shifting when the bar on the bottom of the screen is somewhere between 75 to 90% full. If you happen to be in front of the pack, you might want to think about short shifting a little bit more or adjusting your fuel mapping. So in this case, whenever I'm going through some of the twistier bits of the track, I just move the fuel map to two just so I don't have to sacrifice too much pace and still save a little more fuel here and there. So whenever you go into the pit stop, you might as well just go for new tires because you're, I mean, you're already going in for fuel, right? So you can change your tires so you don't have to worry about the tire wear kicking your butt at the end of the race. You can kind of just put that issue to bed and you just want to make sure you fill your car a little bit more with fuel. So past the little diamond mark, that way you can push the car a little bit more towards the end of the race. Because once again, fuel is an issue in this race and you want to make sure that you have enough fuel to make a push and not make yourself look silly by running out of fuel. It is possible to do a no stop on this race. However, you're going to be adjusting the fuel up being a lot. You're going to have to short shift like crazy. You will have to rely on being behind someone to get all the substream and save a little more fuel here and there. The tires won't become too much of an issue, but at the same time, your pace is going to be falling off a cliff and that's going to invite those around you to basically attack you and try to take your position. But either way, your total time on a no stop is slower than a one stop. So you're better off just doing a one stop, change your tires, refuel, do some fuel saving along the way, and just stay right behind someone until the very end of the race. So I'm just going to show this pit stop sequence. I go ahead and change the tires so I don't have to worry about the tire wear for the rest of the race. And I'm just going to go ahead and feel up and just go a little bit past the little diamond. That way I have a little bit more feel to play around with. And I'm going to go ahead and get out of the pit stop. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this guide. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. So this is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.